So many of you already know about our Clean Juice products for the Game Boy Advanced and Game Boy Original. They're the LiPo battery packs that replace AA batteries in the consoles. So you don't need to keep replacing them with AA batteries. You simply recharge the battery with a USB-C cable. Well now I've made another one, but this time for the Game Boy Pocket. So this is the Clean Juice Air. And this is the first wireless rechargeable battery pack. The reason for the wireless is the Pocket is much slimmer than the original and the Advance. It also has AAA batteries, so there's less room to fit in a USB-C connector. It's also cool that you can now wirelessly charge your console. So let me show you how easy this is to install in a Game Boy Pocket, as well as then how to diagnose if you have any issues. So we have here a Game Boy Pocket. Uh, it's stock, it's got a Retro 6 ABS shell, so much better quality, but that's not a requirement. And if we take a look at the back, it currently has the standard AAA batteries in. So you can start by removing these batteries. If you're using a Retro 6 shell, which we highly recommend, then this kit just drops in. If you're using a original shell, you will need to cut out the bottom of the battery compartment to fit everything in. But I'm going to hope you're going to choose our shells because they look amazing and it's a drop-in support. So next, you just want to take this battery spring out. The simplest way is to just get some clippers. Uh, we sell these on the store. If not, just get some normal clippers or you can even use your finger to grab. But if you struggle, just put the grippers between the battery hole here and the battery spring there. Grip and pull up. And with that battery spring, just keep that spare in case you want to go back to AAs. The next step is quite simple. The battery should go in with the Retro 6 logo facing you. The Clean Juice Air should also have the writing that you can just about see here for GPP also facing you. So you have both of them facing the same way. There's the battery connection. And as you see, if you place this on here, these terminals will make contact and they will provide power to this board and then output the correct voltage for the system here. So with that done, simply hold them like this, place them there, put them in the shell like that, and then keeping that down, you simply push in and down. Now you're looking for a click, or if you want to visually see, you're simply looking for this board to be down on the edge. I'll just remove this once more and show you again. And to remove them, we'd recommend tweezers down here, lift the board up and do it in reverse to simply take it out it's that easy let's put it in once more and you can keep pressure down here push over and push in and there's the kind of click sound you sometimes get but you'll notice here if it's not going in it needs to go over these ridges so you need to push in firmly enough to go over the ridges and then you simply reinstall the battery cover and if we turn over and test we can see this now works fine. You've got your contrast wheel on the side for the desired contrast. But let's say you have issues and yours isn't powering up. Firstly, make sure with batteries that your console works so you know it's actually a working console. If so, and you still have issues, you can test the voltage here and the voltage here with multimeters to see where the issue might lie. So if we just grab the multimeter now and let's do a test. The top pin is negative and the pin below is the power input and you can see this is reading four volts which is the lipo battery nearly fully charged so you can tell we have power on the input which is what we need if we didn't we would check that these springs in a moment i'll show you how are making contact with the battery and then if we come over this side ground is the bottom and the power to the console is the top and we can see here we have 3.5 volts roughly once the battery gets low this would drop um, to a lower voltage. So depending on the state of your battery charge, this should be anywhere from 2.4 volts to 3.5 volts. So when the battery gets low, the power LED on the console would go dimmer. So this power LED would simply go dimmer. And in this version, we actually don't have a power LED. Some of them don't. For example, this green one does. So this power LED would dim. So this is all good if your console's working, but what if you don't measure power up here? 
If you do measure power here and you get four volts here, but you don't get any power here, or your voltage is wrong, then it could be that the console isn't working or has a dead short and is pulling down the voltage rail here. But it's unlikely you, sh you won't get power out of these pins. If it is, you would simply remove the battery. So we lift the board out, then the battery out, and then simply lift out. And as you can see on here, the battery pins make contact here. And when it's in the console, if this moves about or isn't quite connected, you can just simply take the pins here and slightly bend them inwards. So you can see we have a slight bend there. You can bend them more in so that it makes contact with these connectors. That should allow you to get contact. You could also test the battery directly first. So ground will be at the top. So if we do it that way, ground is the top and positive is the bottom. And you can check that your battery has voltage first. So if we know the battery's dead, if this says zero volts, then you know it's a potential battery issue. If you have four volts here, and when it's in the console, you don't get voltage here. As you can see now, because I'm not making contact, it's because you don't have contact here. Once it's in the shell and making good contact, so if I try and hold it in position, you can see the power then goes to the board. So that's how we check the battery's working and that the power gets passed to these pins. And then when the power's passed to these pins, it should simply output the correct voltage over here. If you have the voltage coming out of these pins, but the console doesn't boot, but it does boot with batteries, then the potential is these battery springs aren't making contact with this spring or the inner spring for the battery down here. If that's the case, similarly, you could bend this pad out slightly. So the top one, you could bend outwards slightly. And the bottom one will always make contact because it's pushing against a spring. So you will never lose contact here. The one to check is the one in the battery compartment there by bending the spring out. These are all tested one by one by hand, so you shouldn't have any issues, but that's how you diagnose and test for an issue. And then once more, just to fit it nice and simply, we'll place it in, push down, and the board's in. Battery cover over. And there's the console. So what happens now when this one's low on battery and you want to charge? Well, the simple thing is you grab a wireless charger. So let's just grab a wireless charger here. Most will do. And what you're looking for is to place this coil central to your charger coil. They work only when aligned. So being central is very important. The more central you are, the more efficient it is. If you're off center, then things get hotter and it's less efficient and takes longer. So if we look at this and we place it down, we want to be charging central. When it's charging, depending on your charger, if we place this down, we can see this red light come on the charger indicating that it's charging. Some chargers have this, some chargers don't. If yours doesn't have this, then we can take a look on the actual Game Boy and we can see that we have an orange LED that looks red through the shell, but the LED next to the D-pad means that the battery is charging. There's also then another LED under the headphone jack and this simply indicates that the wireless receiver inside here is receiving power. So there's two statuses. The LED near the headphone jack means that the wireless transmitter and receiver are working together and receiving power. And the LED by the D-pad means that the battery has actually been charged. So what happens once you've left it on charge? Uh, it will take about an hour to an hour and a half to fully charge from flat. And once done, on the actual stand, the light will go off or turn green, depending on your charger. And the orange light by the D-pad will turn off. If the light by the D-pad turns off, but your charger stays on, then do just remove it from the stand. Otherwise, the power will continue to flow to the board for no reason, and it's just wasting energy. Like every wireless charge system, wireless chargers are warmer than USB. So to touch when you take it off, it will be warm after an hour of charging, just like a mobile phone would. Uh, but that's nothing to worry about. They operate within the standards they should. And it will be warm to touch, just like a phone, uh, but perfectly workable. So that's really all there is to it. You place it on a charger, you charge it up, you take it off, and you play. 
One other quirk is you can actually turn the console on, as you can see here, and off while charging. So if you were playing the console and the battery got low, you could place it on the charger and you can technically hold the charger in your hand to use it. Or you could have, say, a mobile phone with reverse wireless charging and hold the phone in your hand and keep the thing charged while you're playing. It's a nice little quirk if you don't want to lose a game and you don't want to stop. But it can be charged on or off either way. And that's really all there is to it. Let me know how you get on with your clean juice, if you like it, and if you want to see the wireless in any other products. Thanks for watching.